Hey everybody, I'm Madrybred, and this is one of my favorite games of all time, Haven and Hearth. Haven and Hearth is a difficult game to describe for those who are uninitiated to this game. So the best way for me to show you what it is is to simply show you what it is and explain as we go along. But if you need a super, super brief explanation, it's a very sparsely populated survival MMORPG that's completely free to play if you can get it working, and it was made by a very small independent uh, studio. If you want instructions on how to get the game working and to how, how to get it to run as well as it does for me, I actually use a mod to get it to run this well, and then check out the description of this video, you'll find a link to a post I made on my own forum where I give you instructions and links to every little download you need to make and every little thing you need to do to get this running as well as it runs for me. So there's a lot of unique stuff in this, I'll explain it as I go along. You may notice right away, like, why is the game in such a small box here? That fixes itself in a moment, that's kind of a relic of, uh... Th that's a relic of the original game which runs in a very small window. With this mod, you can full screen it. Okay. So we start in this very confusing room without any kinds of instructions. I believe the website, official website, has instructions, but... I can teach you it way faster. So we're just this little ball of light here. You'll notice that line there. That's part of my mod, actually. It shows me where I'm going. Um, I think it. I think it actually you <laughs> changed all my settings in here, but there are a lot of little settings you can do. Can I turn that off? There we go. And I'll be messing around with that later. The main one you need to know right now, though, is for camera. You probably want to turn it to the fixator. That's what makes it so my camera moves with my character. So first, we need to uh, right-click on this person. And we can enter our name. Well, our name is Manbar. And you just hit the enter button. I believe we pick our gender at this person. Hey, there we go. Macho. And we are a man. You can talk to the person again to become a woman. I believe this chest is empty unless you are resurrecting. Oh no, we actually have our gear in here. Okay. So we want to open up our character sheet. Uh, it was equipment. Here we go. And you can see we're just a Ken doll. There is no nudity. So we're just going to put on all of our equipment. We have our torches right here. And I'll be going over this in greater detail in the near future. And the last thing you need to know in this room is you can talk to this person and you can tell them a hearth secret. I'll go over what a hearth secret is in a moment. But first, we go to the ladder. This has spawned us in a random place in the world. Much like in Minecraft, this is a procedurally generated world. I could walk in any direction forever, and if the map, if no one's ever been there, it'll just generate a new area. Apparently someone's actually made a home right here. Can we see if they have any claim on it? Oh, so they have a claim on that. That's a recently occupied house right there. So we're just going to keep walking. So... What do we do in this world? Well, baby blue eyes. I believe it makes you immune to getting attacked for the first hour of the game. We simply need to survive. However, I want to do more than that. I want to make a city. I want to make a village, at least, and start bringing in my friends and valued members of the community, and we could all play this game together. So what do we do in this game? How do we progress? What's the point of it all? Either than staying fed, of course. And we can see up here that we're full by that green bar. Well, first we want to gain experience points so we can start learning skills. If we open up this menu, this is our kin menu. This is your friends list. You can add people here. You click add kin. And what you do is you type in their hearth secret to do that. Hmm. Or is it their name? Hmm. One of the two. But the main thing here is you can set your hearth secret. You could type in whatever you want here and hit set. And what this lets you do is when your friends come and play this game, and you want to play it with your friends, then all they do is they type in your hearth secret at that man we talked to at the beginning who was asking for a hearth secret, and they will spawn next to your spawn point, which is our hearth fire. We'll be seeing a lot of hearth fires as we walk around. I'll point to the next one I see. So we want to gain experience points. So we're, we're going to open up our character sheet right here. We have a 10 in every single base attribute and a 1 in every skill, which means we are unskilled at everything and we are completely balanced as a human. We are not currently studying anything to become smarter. 
Here's our skill list. And you can see you start with oral tradition, primitive uh, primitive tools and survival um s nah, wilderness survival i'm a bit tongue-tied today um you can spend your your learning points or your experience points as you would refer to them on getting skills or by increasing your skill values skill values are general things in crafting our combat whereas these skills that you pick up unlock different things you can craft and different actions you can do the main three that we're going to look to get right away are foraging, which is dirt cheap. It just allows you to forage for berries and plants as your perception goes up, and your exploration skill, which is right there. Hunting, of course, lets us hunt. <laughs> Text. The game hasn't been updated in a while. Hunting allows you to hunt animals. We're much too weak to hunt animals right now, but rabbits don't put up a fight if we find a rabbit that could be useful. And lumberjacking. This is what will let us cut down trees and start with woodworking, which is, of course, very important. Lastly, we have our personal beliefs. We can change these every, I believe it's six real-life hours. Each one you do will change the balance of your character. And you can change this as far as you want. Like, one day you could have all left side and then all right side if you were to spend enough time on changing back and forth over time. There is, there is no limitation here. But each time you go in a certain direction, there is a penalty as well as a strength. For instance, if you go heavily into nature, you might be very, very good at farming and different kind of working with herbs and plants. But if you go very far into industry, you'd be very good at mining and pottery, the kind of industrial things. And likewise, if you're heavy in, in, in industry, you'll be very bad with plants. And if you're high in nature, you'll be very bad with working with metals. Stuff like that. The most important one that we want to keep in mind right now, though, is tradition and change. Change is how quickly we learn and get learning points, which are experience points, is very important. However, if we go heavily into change, we lose it on tradition, and although we learn faster, we, when we sacrifice goods that our ancestors want, we'll get less points with them to pray with. That's more of an advanced thing, so right now, we're just going to put a point into change, and we learn 24% faster now. That'll be really important. I recommend this the first thing you do. So there are two ways to get learning points in this game. One way is to study curiosities, which are items which your character can put in your study slot right here and use up your attention to, over time, whether you're logged in or not logged in, gain points. Or you can have discovery points, which is the very first time you've discovered something. It's not someone else's made it and you pick it up. It's you made it or picked it up for the first time. You found it in its wild inhabitants. Inhabitants? Environment. For instance, let's uh, take the bark off this birch tree. There we go. You heard the little Zelda noise. It said down there we can make a thing. That's because there's a new thing unlocked. Let's uh, pick one of its seeds. Some more points, and take our first branch. Actually, we'll let it keep taking some branches. So open up our inventory there. We've got a ton of branches. This is our whole inventory. We have some uh, catkin, which are birch seeds. We don't really need that. And we have some birch bark. Well, let's craft tools, and we can make a kuska. That's like a very, very small... Um, a very small mug, almost. You can hold a tiny bit of water in it. About a third a liter. We need two... Uh, it was a two birch bark. We have one. The tens on all these things are the quality. Ten is base quality. So there's another birch tree over here. Let's go to that. Oh, you see down there. That blue campfire, or the, rather that very light green campfire, that is a hearth fire. It's someone's spawn point. If it's a much brighter green, that means they're online. Let's take another bark from one of these trees. And we have the stuff we need, so we'll just go ahead and craft that. You can see the bar there for progress. We have our very first Kuska. Probably won't need it. So let's discover some more new things. Let's take bark from this kind of tree. Mm, that doesn't count as anything new. Okay, let's pick an apple. That's something new. Food is a big mechanic in this game. So the way you increase your actual base attributes is by eating. I say as I take a swig of delicious water, uh, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Base attributes go up as you eat. Different foods will have different accompanying stats to them. 
say, uh, a certain kind of fish may give you mostly intelligence, a little bit of strength. And as you eat it, a total of 10 points will be gathered up between however many points the food gives you, and then it'll roll the dice on which one, uh, which one of those skill points you end up getting as this bar fills. It'll make more sense as you see it happen, however, uh, just know that it happens, I guess. And I see me a rabbit up there. Let's go get that rabbit. So first we want to go ahead and use some of our points here to get hunting. We want to get foraging. We want to get lumberjacking. Those are all very important to have. We have different speeds here we can do, but right now we're not going to worry with that. So I'm going to show you how to hunt a rabbit. For the sake of tutorializing you, I do have a mod turned on so we can see them on the uh, minimap, as well as this radius. Normally, I wouldn't really do that. It's kind of cheating, but for the sake of this tutorial... Okay, so you can see the outline of the rabbit right there. So we're going to left-click on the rabbit to get as close as you can, and then we're going to right-click it. And then we're going to right-click it. Ah, I fucked up. Okay, okay. End combat. Where was the, uh... Oof, I'm trying to remember now where end combat button was. It's been a while. Whatever, we'll get the next one. It's a bit difficult to do this, but you'll master it after enough time. What I was trying to do there was catch the rabbit. The rabbit doesn't get terrified until it knows you're in combat with it. Oh, uh, it was up in the top right corner. Whatever. You don't count as in combat until you right-click it to pick it up. But if you are absolutely adjacent to it when you do that, you'll just pick it up. Okay, let's pick up a rat. There we go. And we gained access to rat on a stick, the first thing we can cook here. Let's uh, pick some more stuff. Let's get a mulberry. Right now, we're just trying to get discovery points. Let's get a leaf. Just trying to pick up every new thing that we haven't seen before. Let's get an acorn. Being in an area with a lot of different kinds of trees is very nice. Let's get a nut. We have a lot of junk here, actually. I'm going to go ahead and drop the rat. Uh, I don't care about the rat. I don't care about a lot of this, honestly. There's a lot of that that we're not going to use right now. So I'm going to just drop it. I don't care if I lose that. We have a little bit of swamp up here. We could find a leech. I believe, just by walking in the swamp a little bit. Oh, and there's a dragonfly there. So, dragonflies. It's very hard to right-click on, but you can right-click on it and lock your character onto trying to grab it. Oh, did I? Oh, we're on run mode right now, but ooh, uh, they're very hard to catch. Um, you had to kind of like see one coming like this, and then mm, time it better than me. Caught one. Okay. So when you're going through swamps like this, you want to have your uh, equipment menu open a lot because any amount of time you spend in one of these swamps, you might get a leech on you. Like right there, we got a leech on us. Leeches are awful and fantastic at the same time. We're going to take this leech off and just put it in our backpack. If you have a leech on an empty inventory slot, it is draining your blood and it's slowly hurting. You can see there are three health bars up there, 100, 100, 100. The far left is your soft health. That is your immediate health until unconsciousness. If that hits zero, you're knocked out for a little while. Um, or, mm, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. And then the middle one is your hard health. If that were to get to zero, say someone keeps hitting you while you're down, you die. And the farthest right is your maximum possible health. So as you get knocked out over and over, that hard health point thing will go down. That means you can heal less soft health points. If that goes down to 80, that means you can only ever have a max soft health of 80 before unconsciousness. One of the only ways to fix this outside of proper medical treatment, which is hard to get, is putting leeches on you. If you put a leech on you, let it suck the blood until it's bloated, and then you can just let it drain over time, it will very slowly get you some hard health points back. It's not the greatest way, and it takes a long time, but it's an option. Also, a bloated leech is great for catching fish, once you learn fishing, because it makes great bait. So now I get to show off the other way of getting points. Studying things. An emerald dragonfly is a quality 10, uh, is a quality 10 curiosity. Let's just put them in there. It takes up two attention points, and it'll get us a total LP, or learning points, of 992 with our current modifiers. It takes four hours to study. That means over the course of the next four real-time hours in real life, whether I'm logged in or not, I'm studying that. 
So if I were to log out now and come back in four hours, when I come back on, I'll get that 992 um, learning points. You can only have one of each study item in your slot at a time. Oh, can I get it? Can I get it? Yeah, I caught one. So when those, those four hours are up, I can use this other one. But I'm going to go ahead and show you right now a very good way to get a very easy curiosity. The easiest curiosity that you can craft. All we need to do is find a pine tree. You can see little remnants of things people have made and abandoned over the years. Empty basket. Okay, but let's go ahead and chip a stone here. That'll be for a curiosity. So you can see there's a very slow progress bar on that one, chipping stone. There we go. And that gives us access to a stone axe. So let's go to tools, stone axe. We need one twig and one stone. Well, we have that. Both are quality 10, so we're going to craft that. And we have our very first proper piece of equipment, a stone axe, quality 5, which is pretty balls, but it'll have to do. So we're just going to put that in our hand. We have an actual tool now. We can make, uh, we can cut down trees and we can cut down trees into blocks like that. Chop that into a block. We can remove tree stumps. And I'm going to show you right now for fun the most tedious thing in the entire game. I'm going to remove this tree stump. Let's just count the seconds. Three, four, five, six, seven... Eight. Ah, uh, God, it messed me up there. Do you see how it stopped doing the animation? That means there was a slight bit of server lag there, so this isn't even an accurate count anymore. But probably the slowest active thing you can do in the game is cut a tree stump. It sucks to do. This is what makes this a very good game to play on the side. This is a great game to play when you're watching a YouTube video or something. We're almost done. I swear it's a fun game. Trust me. When you get far enough in, it's really fun. I'm not fucking with you. So the other bars here. We have hunger. That goes down as you replenish your stamina. Stamina goes down by doing any kind of labor or by sprinting especially. Let's just dro drop the extra wood on the ground. We'll just keep one. We learn how to make a lot of things there. Actually, because, uh, it's a lot of new stuff. So, craft. Let's talk about the menus. Craft is to craft things you could put in your inventory. Combat is for combat stuff. Right now, we can't actually fight. We know how to dodge, and we know how to shoot, but we don't have anything that can be shot. For build, build is to make something that is stationary. Or sometimes you can lift them and move them, but it's an item that doesn't go in your inventory. We can make a drying rack. That's for drying hides and stuff like that. We can make furniture, we know how to make a torch post, that's just a post for a torch. And a container, we know how to make a wicker basket, and a birch bark basket. The two simplest of containers. Let's go back into here. We want to learn more things. We want to learn carpentry. But how many points do we have to work with right now? We're working with about 500 points. You'll notice, I can put points in, uh, oops, in here, and you'll see that they get progressively more expensive. Yeah. Skills are very, skill values are very expensive, which is why I recommend putting very, very, very few points in any of those early on. The most important ones to get immediately, though, uh, after you've gotten your very basic of skills, the, ones, the only ones you want to look at super early on are, are exploration and survival. Survival is your most basic of crafting. That is how you cook a thing directly over a fireplace to be eaten. It's how you make the most basic of tools, like a stone axe. Our stone axe is such low quality, but if we got a survival skill up and used better quality ingredients in it, we could make a better stone axe, which could then cut better quality wood. Exploration is, uh, you multiply your exploration by your perception. I believe that's how it's determined. Uh, I believe that's the equation, rather. I know it's determined by those two interacting, I believe, through multiplication. And that determines what kind of berries and plants you can forage for, which makes that very, very important skill because finding berries and other such herbs and roots early on in the game is extremely important. And it's important the whole game, but early on it's the most important, I would say. 
So as for skills, as we learn more skills, it'll unlock more things. One thing that you want to learn decently early on, but really you only need it once you find a place where you want to start making your home, is hearth magic. That'll teach you how to make a dream catcher, which will, of course, catch dreams, which you can use in very basic magical items, which you can then use to relocate your hearth fire and set your spawn point to wherever you want to set up your homestead. We're not going to do that right away, actually. Um, is there anything that I want first right now? I might want pottery. Plant lore is awesome, but that's for later on. And I might go into stoneworking or will of power or the will to power, which will get you into the basic, basic, basic combat stuff, as well as a few other things. However, uh, I want an exploration of five. We don't have enough for that yet. So I'm just going to get an exploration of three total. So we're going to take a walk here. We're going to start exploring the continent. My goal right now is to find a very far out of the way spot that is convenient. It's got to have water not terribly far away from it. It's got to have uh, hopefully a mud flat not too far so we can get clay. It's got to have trees so that we have wood to build with. That's very important. It's got to have rocks. Here's an anthill. You need hunting to be able to interact with this. Those are three piles of ants walking around. They will completely annihilate us right now because we're garbage at fighting. I'm going to actually go ahead and drop all of these branches because we need inventory space right now. And branches and logs, this is all stuff that we could just find anywhere. Apple's an empty food, by the way. That's what they call a very basic food that gives you no skill points. It simply feeds you. Although we could eat the apple, and the apple core would give us points. So what I want to do here is I want to have the run skill ready. I'm going to raid it and run. Mm -hmm. Didn't aggro them. Okay. They hurt me a little bit there. That's what that noise was. And we're going to go down to... We're at walk speed? We're at walk speed. Okay. And what I'm doing here is I'm leading them away from their anthill. This is a trick you're going to be using a lot of the game until you're good enough at fighting that you can just kill the ants. Ants are the weakest enemy in the game, either in the rabbit, which does not fight back. I'm just going to lead them away. And this is about far enough. We're going to turn on running, which does use up a lot of stamina, so it will make you hungry. We're going to sprint around them. We just need to make sure that we made enough distance so that when we get back to the uh, ant hill to raid it, we have about 10 seconds to raid the ant hill. And you'll get some random drops from this. However, the quality is mostly determined by the soil, as well as, I believe it's your survival or exploration skill. Probably survival. There we go. We got some really good stuff there, I can tell you right now. So we want to set that to peace on all three of those. And we're just going to get out of here, because they're going to follow us for a little while. Once you've got enough distance on them, they'll leave you alone. And we've already started to find herbs because of those points we put into exploration. That is a spindly taproot, and it is a lifesaver in early game. So we're going to pick that up. I'll explain how this works in a second. Of course, that's our first time finding one of those. Okay, they've left us alone. We can go back to walking. Oh, we can see fish jumping in there. If we were to learn fishing right now, that could work out well. Although, if we want to make a... Um, if we want to make a fishing rod, we're going to need to be able to make a hook. And to make a hook, we're going to need some bones to work with. And I, that rabbit got away from us, or else I'd carve its bone into a hook. Anyway, we got some good stuff out of this. Because we can study some of this stuff. An ant soldier is a very, very basic food. Um... You can eat it for strength points, or you can learn from it. It only takes 40 minutes, so we're going to start studying that as well. We got lucky here with an Ant Queen. They give you a lot of stat points, although I'd really recommend studying them. That takes up three uh, attention points, and we're studying that. So we have a solid almost 2,000 learning points worth of stuff studying right now. We have an extra Ant Soldier here to study after, as well as an Emerald Dragonfly. We have some Larvae, which are only for eating. They give us one agility, 
uh, point towards getting agility. Spindly taproot you can eat, although it's an empty food. The main point of a spindly taproot for us right now is that it counts as a piece of string. There are many items that count as string, but spindly taproot is the easiest one to find early on. We could use string for a fishing rod, for all kinds of things, for weaving into cloth. Um, all around strings are very, very important that you collect a lot of them. Once you get into farming, though, it will be less of an issue. Let's just eat an apple there. Well, apparently the, the apple cores don't count as new items. Okay, we'll just eat two apples and drop the cores, just to make sure we're nice and fed. So we're studying a lot now. This is good, because I was a little bit concerned. Um, if you build your character badly early on, you can kind of dick yourself over and make it very hard to start learning vital skills. That's why I very much recommend you pick up the skills that I showed you at the beginning very early on. I think our battle plan here is to go very far north, because it seems like this whole southern area is just a big loop with the water. We don't know how to build a boat right now. And we don't want to know how to swim right now. You don't want to know how to swim until your strength stat is probably in the 40 range, maybe 50. Because if you drown, and it's very easy to drown, because when you're in the water, your stamina drains like crazy. If, you, if your strength is not very high, you're going to drown almost immediately. And when you drown, you can't even go find your body and get your gear back. So when you die in this game, not many things will kill you. Maybe a ball, uh, a bear mauling you might. A boar sometimes will too. But usually they leave you alone when you go down. Other players, though, if you find another player who's learned the murder skill, they can be ruthless. Also, you'll notice that the minimap is not on the same axis as uh, the actual world map. It's a very strange thing where everything is tilted uh, one quarter, or not one quarter, one eighth to the right. So me walking left, or sorry, me walking right is actually going up and right on the map. So I'm just going to keep walking until I find an uninhabited area. You actually see a skeleton down there that's missing its head. That's because when you find a player who's died, you can take the skull and examine it for 24 hours. And when you're finished, you'll get, I believe it's 1% of that person's total spent LP, something like that. So the more advanced the player, the more LP you get, you'll get from studying their skull. So there is some incentive to kill, either than taking their stuff, of course. Although it's not a strictly PvP game or anything like that. Man, when I started my very first ever character... I couldn't find a, another house if I wanted to. I started in a very populated area this time. I definitely want to find a place that's very far out of the way from anything else. Or at least, not close to anything that hasn't been abandoned. I might off-screen a lot of this travel, though. What I'm looking for mostly right now, though, are pine trees. I want to get pine cones. Because that'll let me make... The first renewable curiosity that you're gonna that you're gonna be able to craft. It's the weakest one in the game, although it's the quickest to study. I think it's only a 20-minute study, which is very fast. I see a boar on the map there. They're hostile, that's why there's that red uh, barrier around it. It could start charging you, and that would absolutely kick my ass right now. So can we dig right now? We can dig. Let's get a little a few more LP. Dig on the ground there dirt. Let's dig in the shallow water. Now, I actually am unable to walk into the deep water, which is good. And we got some clay. Ball clay. It's a good source of clay. Mm. I'll run if it sees me. Or if it aggroes to me. Sometimes you can get really close and they don't get mad. Some boars are angrier than others. Looks like a few people spawned around here. Yeah, someone tried to make a house here. Looks like it probably decayed. When you see that uh, stone flooring, means there was probably a house. Maybe he was going to dig a pit there, too. Who knows? Someone really clear-cut this area without planting back. It's important to always have someone who lives with you, or yourself even, that uh, is a very skilled herbalist, so they can plant very high-quality trees so you can have high-quality wood to work with. It's very important to keep replanting trees. Because you never want to have to travel really far to get wood, because wood is used for the construction of just about everything. Oh, we have a rabbit right here. Okay, I'm going to show you how to catch a rabbit. Make sure you got a, a grid of four spaces open so you can catch this rabbit. 
We're going to zoom in all the way. So first we left click on it. So we're as close as we can get. Oh, no, get back here. Fuck, I hate when they go behind trees. Okay, close as we can get. And now right click it. We caught it. So we got a rabbit. What do we do with a rabbit? We wring its neck. So now we have a dead rabbit. Dead rabbit takes up the least inventory space. Now we want to butcher it. And that got us a lot of LP, one for everything we got out of it. We got some raw rabbit meat, which we can, uh, you'll see it has one to HHP. That's hard health points, or hurt health points is what they call it, rather. That means that if I eat this raw meat, I could get unlucky on my dice roll when the points get full. Instead of getting a stat point, it'll actually hurt my maximum health. We have a bone material here, which is very, very useful. We have a fresh rabbit fur, so once we get a tanning tub and a drying rack, we can dry that fur and make it into a leather or fur. So I want to go ahead, and a bone saw is very useful for making boards for construction. However, we're going to find a decent amount of rabbits. We don't need bone glue right now. Hey, look, another rabbit. Or another rabbit, another rat. What I want to get is we want to go into our skill menu. We have some more skill points to work with here, or learning points. I want to learn fishing for 100. So we learned how to make a fishing pole and a bone hook. So I want to get fishing gear. We need two branches. We can do that. One, two. So we're crafting the pole right now. There we go. And we'll put that in our other hand. So now we have a we have two hands of course, so we have a fishing pole or a fishing rod and an axe. We also need to deck out this fishing rod though. Because it's clearly not ready to go. It's just a stick right now, really. We need to give it a spindly taproot. Alright, you need to do that while you're in your inventory still. It's only a quality 5 uh, fishing rod, so it's not very good. Survival skills based in that. Alright, do we have to right-click on it? I, I always forget this. Yeah, you... Once it's, once it's hovering over, you right-click to put it on. There we go. So we've got the string on, which we made a spindly taproot. For fishing gear, we want a bone hook. We're going to make that out of that rabbit bone we found. There we go. We have a fully decked out fishing rod there. That is actually functional. We also got an earthworm when we were digging earlier. So let's, uh, let's put that on. So this is actually functional now. Now, we're using live bait, which means it can only catch one fish. However, it's got a good chance of catching a fish. And we saw some fish jumping earlier. Let's go catch a fish. And I love the fishing music. There's not much music in this game, but man, the fishing music is great. So let's just cast out here. I'm just going to let you enjoy this. Oh, that was an abrupt stop. What did we do? What did we do? Did we catch something? No. Uh, did something break? Let me unequip it. Oh, no. Hmm. I don't know why it stopped. Usually it stops when you catch something and you like, or something on your thing breaks, like your line breaks or something. Fish! Okay, now's a good time to go over other things. So we have a fast travel button. This teleports you to your hearth fire. Um, we want to relocate our hearth fire, of course. We can build a fire out of some branches. That's good for cooking things. We can do criminal acts. Did I tell you to stop fishing? You know, it's possible there's actually no fish in this area of the stream, and that's why he's stopping. Uh, that respawns over time. Yeah, it looks like that's the problem. We can lift things, we can fish, we can repair things, we can light a hearth fire, which requires a beautiful dream, which we do not have right now. However, now that we have the ability to get string, because we can find spindly tap roots, because we put we invested those early points in exploration, like I highly, highly recommend that you do. This means we can go ahead and learn hearth magic now. So we learned how to make a dream catcher. That's under build. A dream catcher is one string, two branches. Very easy to make. And it can catch up to two beautiful dreams at a time. It usually catches about one in every, every half an hour. So you all have an abundance of dreams. These dream catchers are very, very important. Because to relocate your hearth fire, you need beautiful dreams. So you just want to put a dream catcher somewhere in wherever you want to make your camp. 
once you've caught your first dream, you get some sticks around you, you get that dream, and you make your hearth fire there, and that's your home. Now, we're, we're at an impasse here. There's a boar there, but there are also some blueberries. And I want the blueberries. Blueberries are the most basic of herb that you can find. And they're very important because they give you intellect, which is very important early on because for every point of intelligence you have, let me, let's pick that. For every point of intelligence that you have, you can have one more attention worth of curiosities in your inventory. There we go. Got the experience for that. And curiosities, as we got, as we went over earlier, are very, very important because they give you your learning points. And as you could imagine, skills get very, very expensive. So being able to have a maximum of a lot of different curiosities early on is very nice. We're getting unlucky with how many hostile things are spawning around us. I thought we'd be finding more rabbits by now. Then again, we've spawned in a very weird location. So what have we learned so far in the game? We're going to another area here. This is a moor, I believe. What have we learned in the game so far? We've learned a good set of skills to pick up at the very beginning. We've learned how to get a lot of basic stuff. We've learned, you know, strip trees for bark. You can cut them down for wood. You can break off branches to make for tools. You can ship these big stones to use for things like a stone axe. You learned how to... <clears throat> what skills are required and what skill values are required to start finding basic herbs that help you immediately, because as you saw earlier, we already have a fully functional fishing rod, which is a very good find this early on. You learned how to catch a rabbit, which will save you so much time knowing how to catch a rabbit. Because a rabbit's very valuable. Um, it's the most basic and quickest way to get leather hides, which you can then sew clothing out of. You learned how to raid an anthill, which is, of course, very important because anthills are full of curiosity items and early on foods. You learned what a string is, which is used in a lot of crafting. This is someone who's making some chairs down there, maybe a house. Basic farming going on. That's definitely abandoned down there. Yeah, that's definitely abandoned. None of the uh, fields are plowed or anything. And I don't see a claim on it anymore. Let me... Put up my claim menu? No. No claims on it. That was an abandoned camp. You find these lonely abandoned camps every once in a while as you walk around the world. It's very interesting thinking about all the players that have been through there and don't play anymore and just all the time and effort they spent on that and everything and the adventures they had to go through and the exploration they did. And the monsters they fought. When you see skeletons around, you think, you know, how many characters did they have die on them? So an interesting mechanic of this game is when you die, you're dead forever. However, you can have an ancestor. Let's go into this menu again for a second. You can have an ancestor. And that means you retain a small amount of the skill of your previous character. I can't tell you exactly how much because I've actually never had one of my characters die before. I've been very, very lucky because I have had some encounters with high-level players who are bandits who I managed to talk out of. Uh, being assholes, essentially. But that's part of the game. So, um, the higher your change skill, the less of the skill you retain from your ancestors, which is a very big negative if you're unlucky enough to get killed. If you were to be hardcore tradition, when you create your new character that's an ancestor, and one of my cats, Millie, just jumped on the back of my chair, you might hear the occasional meow. Um, the higher your tradition, although you learn very slowly, you retain almost all of your skill. The other thing here, I believe they're called Newman points, but we're going to call them Ancestry points just for the sake of me probably being wrong. There are three things our ancestors want here. They want Jorbenzola, which is a cheese. They want wool, and they want black tea leaves. So what they really want is they want Jorbenzola. The far left thing, they're willing to give you Ancestry points for. These two things will just refresh the list, or we can forfeit to refresh the list as much as we'd like. They want a bucket of water. That's an interesting one. Of a quality of at least 10. Here's the thing. When we say forfeit, that is dumping all of your points to refresh the list. When you actually have points, you would never want to forfeit, so that's when you would want to get one of the lesser things to refresh your list if you can't get whatever the big thing on the left is. 
These points, as you gather them up, you can use to pray for things for your ancestors, and they will grant you things. I believe the first thing you can pray for is at three points, and the biggest thing you can pray for, I think, is at ten points. But some of these are very valuable. You can pray, for instance, to get a piece of metal, and mining and metals are incredibly hard to get and incredibly valuable. We used to have a camp that's still around but mostly abandoned in an, on my other character, Madrybred, that had a population of probably like 15 people, and we never got metal because we never had someone good enough at mining. It's an incredibly difficult process. But right now, he just wants a 10-quality bucket of water. Make sure you, have, you give them something of the quality they want or higher. If you give them something lower quality, they'll take points away. I believe you can go negative, but if you ever go negative, just forfeit. So, um, let's go ahead and ra raid this ant hill. Uh, I'm going to drop some more bark because that is worthless to us. We're going to eat an apple and drop that. We're going to keep the ball clay, actually. Okay. Go and run. You usually take a hit doing that, unless you get lucky on the placement. This is a hearth over here. That's what they call this kind of land. It's the same thing as a grassland. Ooh, and that can it can spawn ste uh, stags and stuff like that. Chickens and stags. However, it can also spawn blueberries. It's basically just a better version of grassland. So we're just going to wait for these uh, ants to get closer. I do not believe stags are ever... Um, dangerous in terms of like they'll attack you first you have to attack them first for them to attack you what they're most useful for is you can actually herd them if you get a rope and you have animal husbandry skill and very good combat skill you can learn how to herd them but that's a very advanced shit so i'm not going to show that until much later in the game i'm going to go ahead and raid this maybe we'll go fishing again soon if we can find some fish I actually forgot to put up a timer, so I don't know how long I've been recording. I'm going to guess more than an hour, though. This is the inaugural video of this playthrough, though. Ah, we only got some larva. So we're just going to get out of here. We're going to walk out of here, because I want to conserve my hunger. Later in the game, when you have food very stably, when you're growing crops and, and you have a sausage-making machine and everything, you're going to be trying to make yourself hungry whenever you can by doing a lot of manual labor, digging in the ground, plowing on the ground with your hands, trying to make yourself hungry to get your stats up as fast as possible. But this early on, we want to be a little bit careful. You, don't, you never want to starve. Ooh. I knew him, Horatio. There's a skeleton of a player here. We took the skull. This is, uh... Is that Serve? Serve's skull. He was a player. Oh, there's an anthill here. It's behind that tree. I'll leave it alone. A player named Serve died there. We don't know what he died of. We don't know when he died. All we know is no one ever took the skull. It's our skull now. We don't know how much the skull's worth. It could be worth a point and take a whole 24 hours to do. We don't even have enough attention to put in the slot. I think it's like 10 whole attention on its own. So we don't know if that's worth it or not. Could be a huge payoff, but doubtful. And so we keep walking. I see we're running into some water here. What we may want to do is actually start learning boat building soon. We don't have enough points at the moment, do we? No. And to learn boat building, we first need carpentry. We don't have enough points. So I think this is a good ending point of the first episode. So again, if you were interested in this game and you'd like to go pick it up, it's completely free. And I have an entire guide on how to get the game and how to make it work. It's in the description. There's a link to it. It's a link to a post on my forum. If you enjoyed this series, then let me know in the comments and everything. Let me know what you think of this game, because I would love to make this a long-standing series if people are into it. Because, again, it's one of my favorite games of all time, and I definitely want to, once I, once I have a set place, then I'm going to start gathering up uh, long-standing members of the community, as well as some of my friends, and having them join in the adventure, and starting to make our own little village and everything. And maybe we'll start expanding and making outer villages and having different tiers of villages and uh, start bringing in more and more and more people. If you want to be in the village, um, talking around and hanging out on the forum is probably the best way to do it. Also, hanging out on my hitbox.tv streams. Thank you, everybody, for taking this enormous amount of time to watch this video. 
I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, have a nice day.